G'day Ziggy D here and in today's video I'm going to be giving you guys an overview and analysis of the new unique items that have dropped in Path of Exiles patch 0.11.4. Now this is the second time I've recorded this video because last time I uh, wasn't actually recording. I talked for 10 to 15 minutes and wasn't recording anything. But uh, oh well, <laughs> let's go again. <laughs> so five new items in this patch and uh, some of them are pretty interesting so let's jump straight into it. First up, we have Wide Swing the Pole Axe. Now, Grinding Gear Games must have been watching my Infernal Blow Marauder build and saw that I needed a cool leveling unique, so they put one in the game. Just kidding, I'm sure that they uh, actually designed this item before that. But, it, nonetheless, it's a fantastic Infernal Blow Marauder leveling item. First up, we have a good amount of physical damage. As I said in that build uh, guide, I, I recommend rolling items with about 90 to 100% increased physical damage on two-handers to get by when you're leveling. This has 143%, so huge amount of extra physical damage, pretty good stuff, and uh, you know, not an incredibly slow attack speed. We don't have like a less than one, one attack speed like we do with some other two-handed items. Now here's the main thing though. Gems in this item are supported by a level 20 increased area of effect. Now this is much bigger than a lot of other items that have uh, affixes like this where you usually have level 17 or 18 or something like that. Level 20 increased area of effect is a huge amount of AoE radius. Pretty sick stuff. Now on top of that we also have plus 2 to weapon range here, which as I mentioned in the previous video, uh, previous Infernal Blow Marauder guide, is fantastic for pretty much any pure melee skill. It doesn't work on things like ground slam or sweep, but it works great on uh, multi-strike, and it works great on, you know, double hit, uh, infernal blow, glacial hammer, anything like that it works really well with. Now, on top of that, this is a polex, so it already has one of the longest ranges in the game. And if you're also getting Master of the Arena, you're going to have plus four weapon range on top of a very high weapon range already. It's going to make it very easy to target and hit mobs. Pretty cool stuff. Now, on top of that, we have some uh, strength and accuracy. The accuracy will be handy because often by level 18, most people don't have resolute technique. You don't usually get that until closer to level 30. So that will help out with actually hitting enemies. And maybe if you're not a resolute technique, that'll obviously be pretty helpful as well. Then the final stat that makes this a really sick leveling item, this is the one that brings it all together, is plus 10 mana gained on kill. If you've ever used the silver branch, you're pretty familiar with how helpful that can be. 10, are on, 10 mana on kill with an insane AoE on something like Infernal Blow or Sweep is going to mean you're going to get tons of mana, and this actually I think means that you can potentially uh, not run Blood Magic. Now a lot of builds won't even have Blood Magic at level 18, so that's pretty good. It will help you get by until you would normally pick it up, but you can possibly even go further without picking up Blood Magic until like in the mid level 30s to 40s or something like that, when this item becomes less viable. And uh, that means you can run the Hatred Aura to uh, increase your damage uh, buy a lot from that physical to cold conversion. Pretty sick stuff, really good leveling item. We're going to see a lot of people using this with Sweep, uh, with Ground Slam, and with Infernal Blow. So uh, give that a go if you're planning on leveling one of these melee characters. Pretty sick Poleaxe, I'm pretty keen on it. And next up, we have Mind Spiral, the Aventail Helmet. Now, this item has some interesting stats, but uh, sadly, it's pretty rubbish. Uh, now, I say that, and I'm usually someone who tries to pick the good things out of uniques, even if they're super niche, I can usually see how they can be useful in certain builds, enabling certain builds, but uh, sadly, this helmet doesn't have many uses. Now, first up, we have 10 and something, you know, 10 and 11% uh, increased cold and lightning damage. That is what it is. It's nothing really super special, but it's something nice. It's a bit of extra stat damage on your helmet. We have 138 to maximum mana. Now, I don't know what the range is on this, but 138 is quite a bit of mana. So that is a pretty good affix, and it's going to help with mana-starved builds quite a bit. Now, next up, we have enemies cannot leech mana from you. Now, this is also available on the passive tree, but the main thing is there's no enemies in PvE that actually leech mana from you. It's purely a PvP stat, and now the fact that this item is level 37 means that it isn't, you can't use it in low level PvP, it's too high a level. That means it's only viable in high level PvP, and even then there's probably a lot better helmets you can use in PvP to be honest, so uh, nothing too special. Uh, other than that we have cannot leech mana combined with 10% of damage taken gained as mana when hit. So every time you take damage you get some mana. Uh, that's probably enough if you have a tanky build uh, with you know a lot of life or something like that to uh, actually regenerate enough mana to keep yourself going without any actual mana regen stats or without uh, any mana leech obviously uh, it, with, especially with the base mana here I think this will solve all mana problems on builds so 
Uh, super niche, I guess, if you find one and you're playing a build that's having some mana issues, you could potentially use that if you're like a melee character. But overall, this item, I can't see too many uses with it. Uh, maybe in the future, if PvP becomes a bit more popular, we might see some niche uses for this item. But, you know, it's just an extra item in there, something else to pick up. <laughs> Unique number three we have today is Voltaxic Rift Spine Bow. Now, this item is sick. It's really, really cool. So, as you can see straight away, we have 1 to 324 lightning damage. That is a huge amount of lightning damage. That's massive. And uh, what I really like about lightning thematically is that it is super erratic as well. Uh, you've got that, you can do 1 damage or you can do 300 plus damage with each hit. So, that's pretty cool. Now, we have 14% increased attack speed, which is pretty nice. But uh, it's worth noting that this item overall has pretty low attack speed when compared to uh, high level end game bows like the Thicket Bow for example which will often have closer to 2 so a bit lower on the attack speed there and also the other drawback is that it has relatively low physical damage so you're not going to get that physical damage conversion on Hatred and on Lightning Arrow for example so this is pure, pretty much purely an elemental damage bow. Now Next up, this is where things get really interesting. We have 100% of lightning damage is converted to chaos damage. Now that's pretty awesome for a number of reasons. Firstly, it's just really creative and cool, I love that. But it also means that all of your lightning damage is converted to chaos from all items. So that means it's going to synergize really well with Thunder Fist Gauntlets and uh, the Wake of Destruction Boots, I believe they're called, which give you both give you a huge amount of lightning damage. Now the next thing is that this will bypass lightning resistances, obviously, since you're now going to be dealing chaos damage. Only very few mobs are resistant to chaos, and even then those mobs usually have low life. So this is a way of essentially having lightning penetration on your item, 100% uh, effectiveness lightning penetration, effectively. And then, finally, this also means that you are pretty much immune to elemental reflect. Uh, you're not doing lightning damage anymore. Nothing reflects chaos damage. The only thing you still have to watch out for is lightning thorns, but uh, most bow builds are pretty used to watching out for that already. Next up, we have 10% chance to shock, but we don't have any lightning damage anymore. All of our lightning damage is now chaos, but that combines with the next stat. Your chaos damage can shock. Now, this is sick. Grinding Gear Games and the Diamond supporters are doing a really good job of coming up with really, really creative items here. I love this. Uh, so basically, all of your chaos damage from all of your lightning can now shock enemies. I didn't even know that would be possible within the coding of the game, so that's really, really cool. Now, this is going to be great on lightning arrow builds, probably even, uh, you know, split arrow builds, and we're going to start seeing this as a main competitor to Lion Eyes Glare. Now, the only thing I want to mention is uh, most people using who aren't using Lion Eyes Glare have resolute techniques, so that means if you're going to get more than the 10% chance to shock that's on this item, you're going to need to pick up some... Uh, some chance to shock on the passive tree, you're going to need to use some support gems to do that. However, there is a rise in accuracy crit builds, and those builds will certainly be able to take effect of this, uh, you know, take make good use of this item. So now, getting to endgame as a bow user, you pretty much have to decide which is better between uh, the Lion Eyes Glare or the Voltaxic Rift. If you're an accuracy based build, probably Voltaxic Rift to be honest. Pretty sick item, tons of lightning damage, tons of really high damage shock stacks. Uh, pretty cool stuff overall. And the very next item we have is the Goddess Scorned Elegant Sword. Now this is one of three of Charan's unique items. He's so far designed another one, and uh, this is the second of his three that he's designing, and the third one will be coming, uh, maybe in a month or two. But, uh, the, the really interesting thing about this item is it is not in the loot table at all. That means it cannot be dropped off enemies, and it cannot be chanced by chancing Elegant Swords. So, the only way to get this item is to use a vendor recipe. Now, this works in conjunction with Charan's other unique item, which, if I can pronounce it correctly, is Tipua Kai Kohuru. I think I said that right. If you vendor that item with an unknown set of other items, you can get this sword, and that's the only way to get this sword. Now, as I said, no one really knows the recipe for this yet, except for probably Charan and some of the developers. And uh, the only reason I have this picture is because he posted it. So, uh, some people are speculating that the actual nature of the recipe is hidden in a puzzle in the flavor text, which would make sense. There's some very specific words here, like, uh, you know, there's some interesting words there. I'm terrible at puzzle, puzzles and logic things and things like that. So, if you love puzzles and you are, you think you might want to get this item, then uh, ha you can probably have some fun. You get the Tupua Karuko Huru. Uh, I think I screwed it up that time. And uh, start vendoring it with some different items to try and figure out this guy, uh, what this actually is. 
because uh, you know I'm keen to see that and maybe hopefully someone will post the recipe pretty soon uh, after they discover it. But anyway, let's actually go on to the actual item. Let's take a look at the stats of it. First up, we have this is a one-handed sword and it uses both hand slots. Thematically, that's really cool. It's kind of like a duelist rapier and the previous sword was indeed a rapier. Uh, in, essentially, it's like using a two-handed sword, especially when combined with this 274% increased physical damage, so quite a bit of physical damage for a one-handed sword. It's equivalent to a two-handed sword in every way, except it can't have a six slot, uh, can't have six sockets essentially. Uh, now it's only a level 28 item anyway, so that's not a huge deal for this one in particular, but probably will be a bit of a deal for the next uh, item. On top of that, we have a ton of crit chance and crit multiplier. Obviously, these scale really well together, and this combines in with some of the fire damage stuff that comes in a little later. Next up, we have 41% fire resistance uh, and cannot be ignited. This item pretty much makes you immune to fire damage as long as you have some other resist from somewhere else. Uh, thematically really cool stuff. Next up we have 100% of physical damage is converted to fire damage. Uh, obviously this item is all about igniting enemies on fire. Combined with the critical strike chance and if you have a high base crit already uh, from your passive tree or if you have some chance to ignite stuff from either a support gem uh, then you're going to be setting enemies on fire and burning them 50% faster. Now I have confirmed in the past that this means that enemies take their damage 50% faster, not that they burn for 50% less time, so that's really good. Essentially you have very rapidly burning uh, enemies and they take a lot of damage really quickly after you crit them, with your relatively high damage as well. Then the final mod here is you can only deal damage with this weapon. This means you can't use it with things like EK to, or Bear Trap to convert their physical damage to fire, uh, you know, to abuse that essentially. You have to use attacks with this item. Overall, it's really cool. This is about, this is basically a fire sword. Yeah, you just whack enemies with it. Uh, they get crit, they start burning, they burn really rapidly, and they die. Uh, pretty cool stuff, and you're immune to fire yourself. I really like it. I think I like what Tron's doing as well with uh, coming up with these three uniques that all go into each other. Now, this one will also be in the vendor recipe for the next item as well. So, if you want to get the second and third swords, you need to go through the steps of the vendor recipe essentially. Pretty cool stuff. And then the final unique I have for you guys today is Devoto's Devotion. Uh, that is a hilarious name, I have to say, and it's a Nightmare Bassinet. Level 67 helmet, and look at that armor and evasion. That is huge, over 1,000. So already you're seeing, you know, this is a pretty reasonably powerful item. Now next we have 10% reduced physical damage. Now this immediately screams out to me, Elemental Cleave. Uh, you know, physical damage on Elemental Cleavers and uh, some other Elemental Builds, but mostly ele Elemental Cleavers is uh, obviously not a non-issue, so you can mitigate that quite easily. Next up we have 53 Dexterity, so if you're an Accuracy Crit based Cleaver, which isn't many, but maybe if you are, uh, that'll help. Otherwise it'll just help with using some, uh, some of your support gems and things like that. 10% increased attack speed is a really good stat on a helmet, obviously not one you can normally get, so that's going to help out with cleavers a lot as well. And then we have 18 Chaos Resist. Chaos Resist is pretty good, and this uh, makes up a little bit for the fact that there's no other resists on this helmet. The other drawback to this helmet that I should mention now is it has no life, so uh, you are trading away a, a bit of survivability essentially uh, for a lot of extra damage related stats. And then the final one we have is 20% increased movement speed, which is huge. Combined with 30% pair of boots, you are going to be zooming around. So you can imagine with this item, we've got uh, a very, you know, very fast moving, fast running, fast attacking uh, cleave builds especially, and maybe some other melee builds, I think. Uh, we'll do really, really cool with this. This might even have some potential with uh, certain elemental bow builds as well, so that could be interesting. Uh, and then to top it off a bit thematically, we have the mercury footprints effect which uh, makes sense, you know, we've got this really fast-moving liquid sort of character, and, you know, we've got this winged silver helmet here. Uh, kind of, kind of, it's going to make you look pretty godly, I think, having this winged helmet, and then having these silvery footprints as you run around really fast. I can't speak properly today. I've been talking for the last 30 minutes trying to record this video for the second time. <laughs> anyway, a uh, pretty cool item overall. I think this will compete uh, a little bit with uh, the Bringer of Rain. However, I don't think it's as good as Bringer of Rain. Bringer of Rain is fantastic, but this should be a bit of a cheaper option for uh, some cleave builds and also could be good for some bow builds as well. If you have Iron Reflexes, you get the 1000 armor out of it as well. So pretty good defensively despite not having any life or other resistances. And Chaos is pretty good. Overall, a pretty solid item. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed it. This week has been pretty interesting. A number of interesting uniques. Uh, some that aren't quite so great, but uh, interesting overall. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.